Welcome back. If you are new, my name is Lynette. I am happy you're here. I hope you all are excited for this week's video. I filmed around a week's worth of cooking and baking. I didn't do like every single meal by no means, but mainly I tried to do like the dinners we had or a few lunches here and there, some snacks and things like that. I will have all of the recipes and links for things in the description box as much as I can. Uh, this is actually a Sunday night starting out the video. Nick and I made a smoked street corn that we put on our Traeger. I don't know about you, but we tend to not do very much cooking Sunday evenings. It's really usually kind of a popcorn or snacks or whatever we can find. Sometimes charcuterie style stuff. At home growing up, my mom used to uh, call it a biblical supper. We just do a seek and ye shall find. Uh, so anyway, it, let me know how you guys uh, typically handle Sunday evenings. But this was a really relaxing evening. We had a fire outside and it was just, it hit the spot. So I'll try to put that recipe in the description box. Although it's not exact because I kind of veered off of a little bit. I just tend to be a bit of a dumper and I'll combine things and such. But next time I'll back off on the salt, I think. So moving on. So this evening I had some leg quarters. I think they were fairly good price. And I also decided to make some brownies for dessert, but also just to have on hand. I decided to make a mac and cheese to go along with the chicken. Uh, the chicken we also put on the Traeger, so it was a more of a smoked barbecue chicken. I haven't done this very often, so if I can remember, I'll try to put the recipe or something similar in the description box. Sometimes I tend to forget which ones I used but I'll do my best to put as much down there as I can. So I'm jumping around here a little bit, but back to the brownies. I did a cream cheese brownie versus just your regular brownie, and I kind of wanted to have some on hand anyway. And then back to the chicken here, I put it on the smoker, and I don't remember temps offhand, but I'll have that info linked below. Moving to the mac and cheese, I decided to do a smoked mac and cheese as well, since I had the smoker going anyway. So you're going to make a roux and I decided to put it in the cast iron pan since I can then transfer that to the smoker and it's all in one dish basically. So I made the pasta in another pot and then I'll make the cheese sauce as you can see here and then you pour it all together and then I was able to put it on the smoker that way. Somehow every time I make mac and cheese I have way way too much. Ugh, it's ridiculous but... I'm probably not the only one, right? Uh, so I did like a mixture of different cheeses I had on hand. I think a lot of them call for sharp cheddar or cheddar of some kind, but I didn't have enough of that, so I just supplemented with some other things. So moving on, I also did some green beans. These are canned. I think these were from my aunt's garden maybe, and they had been canned up in Ohio, so I was able to bring some down with us last summer, which I'm trying to use kind of sparingly because we don't have some of ours of these ourselves but anyway they turned out good so here is the whole meal put together the mac and cheese were maybe a tad uh, stiffer than I'd like but that kind of happens when you put it you know on Traegers or you bake it uh, just is not your typical like super runny type of thing so it turned out really well everyone enjoyed the meal and it was definitely a more of your full course meal. I don't do this every night for sure, but it was good to have something, you know, filling and warm. So there is a look at the brownies along with some ice cream, and that's going to be that. So the next day, the girls and I went to Detweiler's Farm Market to pick up some grocery items, and I'm showing you a bunch of the Walnut Creek Foods products that I got, as well as some that I had on hand. If you are not familiar with them, they are based in Holmes County, Ohio's Amish country, if you will, and they sell a lot of different products, food-related things. They have a lot of deli meats, cheeses. They have an in-house bakery where they make a lot of food themselves, and they ship these out, you know, to different stores across the United States, especially those of like more your like bulk food type stores, convenience stores, things like that. And we're able to find some of these products down here in Sarasota locally. They also have an online store or website, I should say, uh, walnutcreekcheese.com. And you can use my discount code Lynette for 10% off of your online order. 
Uh, they do also have two main stores in Holmes County. So there's one in Berlin and Walnut Creek. Uh, and you can visit those if you're, you know, maybe vacationing or whatever. Definitely take time to stop at the Walnut Creek location, especially. They have a restaurant there. It's just a really cool experience to go in. They have so many more products and just different things, housewares, you name it. And I just, I love partnering with them and I'm thankful they are sponsoring today's video. So make sure you go check out the description box below. I will have that linked there for you. So after our Detweiler's run, we're gonna have a little snack. So we had gotten some of their donut holes that they make there at the Clark location. Uh, and so the girls <laughs> were eating some donuts this forenoon. And we also dropped some off at my grandpa and grandma and mom and dad. So they're kind of not like super hungry, but I bought a uh, crunchy roll. So sushi, I love it. They make it fresh there. Good? Are you a big girl? Mom, I think I'm a big girl. You are. I have two left. Everything has to be a race, huh? Poke it. Oh, fingers work better, right? There, go like this. There you go. Let me know. Are you a sushi lover or not? I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm eating like a monkey, like that monkeys eat. Really? Yeah. I only started eating it since we moved to Florida. I feel like our palates have broadened <laughs> since we moved to Florida. So, uh, how's the sushi, Harper? How did you like it? Is Hi. It, <laughs> is it good? Is it yummy yummy? Uh, 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 Do you want more? <laughs> Say sushi. <laughs> All right, so that evening the boys had baseball practice and it means they usually need to leave by 4.40 or so, so it's really early. Most times I don't even really make dinner, but I decided to make a trail and Swiss, as we call it, or as Walnut Creek Cheese actually calls it. So this trail bologna I had shown you is made in Trail, Ohio, actually, and it's really, really good. And this is a kind of a, maybe it's more of an Amish style sandwich. I don't know, but this is something the Walnut Creek Cheese actually sells at their uh, Walnut Creek Cheese store. And they're really, really good. So I just made that really quickly for the boys. Uh, this is something that I didn't film me making, but just some muffins that I made to have on hand. They're like a cappuccino muffin. Moving on, this is another day. I have a top sirloin steak here, a pretty large one, and I decided to do that as well as some chicken and asparagus and then some uh, mushrooms to go with it on the side. I think I also made some fries for uh, the girls just to have some carby type things. So something we've been doing lately with steak is we have a hard time making steak to our liking. We're not very good at it, I guess, the smoking or the grilling part of it. But I had seen something on Pinterest a while back where they cut it into like bite-sized pieces. I think it's maybe called garlic, garlic seared steak. I forget what it's called, but I'll try to link that uh, below, but basically by cutting your steak into more of your bite-sized chunk, you're able to like cook it much more evenly and it's really quick. And we've had very good success doing it this way. I also feel like there's not maybe quite as much waste with it as if you were to cook a whole steak. So I typically try to find steaks that maybe aren't, you know, as pricey or something. And this one, I think all of us pretty much had a little bit of steak, maybe not Harper, but you know that. And then also I did a little bit of chicken that I had thawed as well, just to, you know, make sure we fill all the corners. Uh, and I just fried that in like the cast iron pan. Again, I have some bacon grease here that I was using up and salt, pepper, some seasonings. I had some Kinders, the all purpose, uh, just kind of do whatever you want. Also minced garlic is really good if you put that in there. It just makes it very fragrant and the chicken I just kind of seasoned as well. So nothing too fancy or anything but sometimes I feel like easy meals like this are a lot less stress and there's it's simple, it's filling and it's 
really good, and especially in the winter time if you're in colder weather and things. These types of meals are just really good to have. We don't cook a ton of soups down here because it's often warmer. So that is something you probably won't find me cooking as much. And I do miss it sometimes, but you know, it's just kind of how it is with Florida weather and everything. But yeah, this meal was a hit. Everyone enjoyed it. The mushrooms, I think I had a few of those. I'm not a big mushroom person, but Nick is. So I did those. And also we had some chicken and stuff. So yeah, it was definitely a bigger meal as well, but uh, it turned out pretty good. All except for the asparagus was not great tonight. I'm not, I'm not sure what I did. Did I cook it too long or what? But it wasn't, it wasn't the absolute best. So moving on to another day, I think this was the next morning, I had gotten a roast out and I decided to sear it before I put it in the crock pot. I have been having trouble with my roasts being dry and I do not understand it because I, I, like I did them the same way for years. I usually try to use a chuck roast and I, I don't know what has the quality of meat changed. I've gotten it from different uh, stores. I've tried different things. Sometimes I just, it's, it's not very moist and this time around it actually turned out pretty well. I usually just put in some beef broth. I like adding Worcestershire sauce. I put in onions, carrots. I'll season it with, you know, salt, pepper, garlic stuff, you name it. And then I'll just usually cook it in the crock pot. Generally, I like to cook it on low. I think sometimes if I'm in a hurry and I do put it on high, that could be part of it. But I know there's different methods of doing it and I had been thinking of trying to like smoke it or something and I still may try that another time doing it more of like your brisket style roast beef. I've seen people talk about the it's like a knockoff brisket. It's just not as expensive so we'll see. I may try that at some point but this was a day where I was going for most of the day. I took the girls to the beach so I knew that I wanted to have a meal ready in the evening. Nick actually ended up not being at home. I forget, did he have a business meeting or something? So it was just the kids and I. But I also decided to make some oatmeal or like little Debbie's and I made those to have on hand. I also put some in the freezer. These were a little bit on your flat side. I did even add baking powder to the recipe that did not even call for it. So I don't know. I. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm gonna put it in the description box for you because I don't feel like it's like the best recipe but um, they were still good and we enjoyed them it's just they some of the first ones especially were a little bit just too thin they just didn't like puff up enough so I might not put the recipe below but I thought I'd show you anyway just in case you're needing some inspiration or something but yeah I was able to put some in the freezer too here is the roast that we then ate and it was actually pretty good. It was pretty moist and I was pretty happy with it. Uh, I would say maybe the searing helped a little bit with that. We generally have uh, baked potatoes with it and sometimes I'll put those in the crock pot, sometimes not. But then we add like sour cream and cheese and stuff to it. So this is a lunch that I made. The boys had a half day of school this day and I had some chicken left over from the other night. And then also I had another um, chicken, I think it was a chicken breast that I hadn't cooked yet. So I cooked that one up and then decided to make some chicken quesadillas as well as some chicken salad. I just made simple chicken quesadillas, nothing fancy about it. But then also the chicken salad, I put in some mayo, some sour cream, some diced up celery, almonds, and I think salt, pepper. I forget if I added some other seasonings to it, but I didn't end up eating it that day, but I had it later on, on Sunday then, and it was really good. I usually toast my bread and put a piece of lettuce on it, and I, I thought it was really good. So I don't know why I don't make it more often, especially if I have like leftover chicken. It's like a super easy thing to do. It's not hard at all. So hopefully that gives you an idea. And the last meal I have is a very basic one. It's nothing fancy. It's not really a recipe necessarily, except for the noodles that I'm gonna make. But uh, we're doing burgers. I did those on the smoker. So a lot of you have noticed uh, that Nick has lost a lot of weight in the last couple months. And I've gotten so many questions as to what he's been doing, what plan he's on, and that kind of thing. Uh, basically, he kind of did his own thing, but essentially how he's lost over 30 pounds. He's kind of back on it. He kind of cheated over the holidays and stuff but the main thing was he cut out all carbs 
no soda, no sweets, nothing. He basically, it would kind of be called a, maybe kind of similar to a carnivore diet in a sense. Basically, he would eat a lot of protein, and especially in the evening, only protein, nothing else pretty much. And that is how he lost a lot. Now, I know this won't work for everyone, but he felt really good on it. He wasn't even really exercising at the time, but that's how he lost the majority of his weight. And he was kind of able to maintain it for the most part. And I think it, it went off slower. And that's always a good thing when you're losing weight. So hopefully that helps you all if you've been, you know, wondering how it went for him and what he did and everything. So I am making what we call Amish noodles here. And you're going to be browning your butter first in the pan or like in your saucepan. And you're going to add in chicken broth, chicken base, maybe a little salt and some cream of chicken soup. And this is a really easy meal. You can make it ahead of time and it actually, they want you to let, let it sit for like an hour or two. This is something that they'll do in like Amish church lunches or funerals, especially funerals, this is a typical thing. Uh, so I'll try to put the recipe down below, but we also had some Milo sweet tea and then obviously the burgers and I had some veggies as well. So just a very easy basic meal and it's something that can work for the whole family the rest of us can eat our normal breads and whatever but Nick is able to still eat as well and I don't have to like cook something separately for him if you will so that is going to conclude today's video I hope you enjoyed it may you have a blessed week ahead and I'll see you all next time bye